you know, someday, I'm going to get back around to playing this game. Currently, February 2015, so it's been a solid two and a half years since I played it. Anyway, what's up, guys? Welcome back to the Naruto Ultimate Ninja Marathon. And uh, it turns out I made a little bit of a miscalculation because I thought, well, <laughs> first of all, bear with me. It has been a long time since I played Ultimate Ninja 3 before I started live streaming it a couple days ago. And come to getting back to the live stream, I come to figure out that uh, this is actually a very brief telling of the uh, Sasuke retrieval arc. And I didn't expect that. So the teen angst will have to wait to be put into full swing for another day, but most of it's still intact. Most of it. For the most part. Okay. So that being said, I think it's time to get the show going. Uh, however, I'm... <laughs> This game has required me so much forethought to figure out how the hell I'm going to be doing this. But you know what? I'm going to spare you the details for the time being. Let's just dive right into this and see what kind of trouble we can get into. Woo! Alright. So, Ultimate Ninja 3. And unlike the other games, I have not looked into any backstory for this game whatsoever. I do not know anything about the, the uh, creation of it or anything thereafter. All I can really tell you is that... Uh, the Japanese box art for this game, Alt Nar Ultimate Heroes 3, looks pretty sick. I have to, I have to say, pretty dope. Let me make sure the volume isn't too loud. Also, yeah, I will be, would be a little bit loud. So anyway, yeah, that's all I really got to say about that. Uh, I'm gonna have a few things to say about this. It's gonna be just like last time in Ultimate Ninja 2, where I gave you the full breakdown of things that were changed and all that good stuff. And this load time is actually taking a little bit longer than the second game did. Hmm. It's weird. Okay. Actually, is this taking a long period? There we go. <laughs> I was getting a little bit worried for a second there. Alright, you see all these levels so far. Bandai. Cryware. There we go. What's going on? What are you? I'm your friend! Alright, so from that intro sequence, you probably took a few things away from it. Uh, just got a list of ones that came to mind off the top of my head immediately. Uh, there is summoning juice enough for ultimates. The crazy graphical inter uh, crazy graphics uplift. Uh, there's CG cutscenes now, and everything is, and there's still a teen angst to be had. So, uh, also, one really good thing that I don't know why I wasn't into. It's, it's fucking dumb that it wasn't, but anyway. Uh, they actually have multiple save files back. Uh, if you remember, Ultimate Ninja 2 only had one save file, which is dumb. Ultimate Ninja 1 had one, uh, three. This game also has three. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what's going on with that. So, uh, how was I going to do this again? Now, nah, yeah, I'll just do this talk about. Why not? Okay. So, for anyone, uh, I was. 
You know, when I was doing a breakdown for this game, there was... Oh, hi, Anko. Yee! Uh, there was a lot of different ways I could go about doing this. I, want, I was thinking about doing a new save file so I can show you guys the breakdown of getting new characters as they are unlocked. I was thinking about doing, like, just skipping ultimate contests all, all together and just doing Heroes History. I was working with a lot of stuff. This game is structured very non-linearly, and I had to really think about what the hell I was doing. But before anything else, I need to showcase this. And this is also why I'm not going to do a new game. Uh, I'm doing the same old, same old, showing the, what's new, and uh, I think there's a way to... Ah, damn it. That's not a thing yet, but I guess that's what happens when you uh, get all the characters. This fake file, this is still new, and I'm still working on Ultimate Contest. Uh, unfortunately, I have not yet unlocked everyone. That will come at a later date, but for right now, I think we're off to a good start. So, let's discuss the things that have changed once again, because, you know, this is a it's a fighting game. I like to give all the breakdowns of every new Ultimate Ninja game I get, too. This trying to uh, com wrap the retrospective all together in one ne nice cohesive package. And, uh, yeah, just take this all in. <laughs> okay, uh, there's a lot of things I want to go over. Uh... Holy shit, where are we again? Alright, so first of all, there, this game, this, this is, okay, actually no, the first thing I do want to cover, uh, the camera has been changed drastically, uh, for, maybe for specific levels, but for the most part, I've noticed that the camera is more pulled back than it was before, only on certain stages will be, like, a lot more, like, pulled towards the action, but for the most part, it's pulled out, it's pulled back a little bit more. It seems to be also upwards at an angle a little bit, uh, like if it was raised by like a foot up. I mean, that's just me. I'm kind of a stickler for cameras and video games, so I do notice these things. Uh, I don't think it impedes it too much, but I think it gives it just enough of enough character really like to that part from the past games. All right, and of course, as you probably know, I'm using Itachi because, you know, <laughs> clearly not an Itachi fanboy or anything. Nah, definitely not. All right, uh, where is the display settings? There it is. I remember to click X instead of square, triangle, and here we go. Alright. First thing I want to highlight. This game has fucking combos. And I mean... Alright, hang on. I actually, actually did a pretty bad job there. Uh, what I mean by combos is that there's actually multiple ways you can get combos in this game. What I mean by that is there's a couple new mechanics. Uh, in the last game, there's this new mechanic that I'm basically dubbing the tailspin. It's basically... Uh, like like that except like not as crazy actually I think a better version would be Itachi's back uh, nah it's not very good either what the hell okay I know Itachi had something for a tailspin but I don't remember what nah it's alright well you, you, you kinda know what I mean hang on actually I think this will do it no no oh. you guys I can't illustrate the tailspin right now but that was introduced in the last game, and now there's two more uh, mechanics introduced for combos in this game. That's the wall splat and the ground bounce. Ground bounce looks like this, except not really. <laughs> I don't know why Itachi's air combo doesn't do that do the ground splat. Ground bounce, uh, basically you knock your opponent into the ground and they bounce up off of it for relatively. Or wait, hang on. Actually, I know what ground bounce is. Down attack, or not? Well. A very drastic ground bounce is like his square series into that. That's a very big ground bounce. I don't know why he has that. Uh, actually, one strategy I found is um, jumping right on your opponent's face, pressing back square as soon as you're about to hit him, and then bam, right, just immediately. Pretty good mix up, I would say. Just, uh, I still don't know why Itachi's here has Zangief spinning Paul Driver from Street Fighter. I find it kind of weird, but whatever. That's a new item. I'm going to run away from that. <laughs> Cool combo though. All right, and the the wall splat is a little easier. It is it's right. It's basically like they just bounce off the wall, then they do like the tailspin animation off the wall. It's very easy to get like any sort of combo you want after it, as soon as I can actually hit it. For some reason, Itachi's combos in this game are just very odd. I don't know why. All right, uh, trying to think of. There we go. Alright, so the forward square actually did the uh, the wall splat, and then what I usually do is I just, like, do a minute dash right and do an air, count, air juggle. That's basically, uh, kind of like the BMB of juggles I found in this game. So, other things that haven't changed. Uh, first of all, ultimates have received quite a bit of a facelift. Okay, ignoring how this move, I'll just let you see it for a sec. So 
So Itachi here just dropped. Okay. All right. All right. Itachi here just dropped a meteor made of Amaterasu flames on Sasuke. <laughs> really? That that's a bit of a. I would say that's a bit of an example as to the craziness this game is going to get into, and it's pretty fucking insane. Also, uh, outside of the sheer ridiculousness of the spectacle, just pay attention to like the graphical stuff in this. Um, there's a, all the textures are redone in the ultimate itself, so each character model looks a lo lot more smoothed out, and not as jaggy with animation lines as in the previous games. So they look a lot less manga, is why I, I guess I'm trying to say here. They, they do look a lot less like actually like hand drawn and look a lot more like cell shaded. Cell shaded? Not really. Uh, that's more or less why I want to cover there. Outside of that though, eh, fairly rudimentary changes. Uh, you got changed heads up displays. But I do want to say this right now. Let me just, um, you probably saw me char charging chakra a few times in Ultimate Engine 1 and 2. And uh, there's been one significant change that I think does change the paradigm quite a bit. Assuming it's anywhere in here. No, well, mm, where's the option for a bit chakra? I do not want that on right now. No, no. Command display, ultimate jutsu. Well, guess I'm not getting it right now. But take my word for it, uh, chakra is actually a lot more difficult to maintain in this game because we're in the last game, and if you hold on the chakra button, you can charge your. Uh, <laughs> as it goes. You can charge chakra like one bar per half a second here in this game it takes like two seconds to charge one full bar of chakra it's actually kind of really hard to maintain your chakra in this level in this game actually so therefore it's a lot you gotta be a lot more strategic and all that, all that good shit and yeah so and so forth so uh one more thing i want to show off before <clears throat> we get this sh show going i'm noticing there's actually uh, while I was preparing for this game, I couldn't make up my mind if there was like a lot of significant changes that would that need to be covered or not. But now I'm looking at this critically, uh, objectively. Now I can say, yeah, there's actually a lot less changes than I thought there was. All right, nice. We're signing on. That's good. I bet you guys can imagine what that is, since this is you know the Sasuke retrieval arc. Uh, if you don't, well, we're gonna cover that in the story mode. But I do really like the character boards of this game. Really well done. Really nice. Really good. Nice. Simply drawn, really well detailed. I like it. Anyway, so there's one significant change I do want to discuss that unfortunately won't really be outlined later because I don't have access to it yet. <laughs> oh, this. Okay. So you probably saw this in my combo, like, brief video I did, like, showing the uh, new combo potential in this game. And uh, in there, you probably saw Nine Tails Naruto, uh, One Tails being a thing. And. Revolution 2 is called uh, Ultimate Nine Tail Naruto. Usually it's just called One Tails though. Yeah, you know, pick your poison. It doesn't really matter. So there's actual uh, permanent transformations you have access to in this game. And I gotta say, these transformations are fucking broken. They're stupid. Like, let me show you. Do you see how fucking far Naruto's throw range is? Okay, even just like his. Okay, his air throws are also ridiculous. But that's not as bad as Sasuke in Curse Mark Second State. Second State Sasuke, his low attack is damn near half the screen on a bomb. By the way, I, I apologize for any arachnophobes that may be seeing the giant fucking tarantula in the background. Trust me, I'm a arachnophobe myself, and that gets me to me every once in a while also. <laughs> you're not you're not the only one. Anyway. But outside of that, these transformations are permanent, uh, depending on what you uh, depending on the character. Some are still just small stat buffs, like, uh, you know, Sasuke with Sharingan or something like that. Others, like Nine Tails Naruto, are permanent. And they're completely new movesets, like, let me show you. They do get flat out and brand new movesets all together. And, <laughs> you know, I never really like uh, this cloak that non Naruto has in this form. It's just, I don't know, it's just the bloom effect is really high on it. It's just really ugly to look at. It's just, and it's so blurry, too. I don't know, I never really liked it that much. Anyway, that's more or less it for the changes I want to cover for the core mechanics. Is there anything else? All right, well, 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 but outside of um, the new and altered stages. By the way, they got rid of the freaking uh, Heroes Heroes Monument stage that had the rain in the background. 
I thought this day was fucking beautiful. It's gone now. I'm like, ah, oh, you suck. Ah, oh, well. Um, yeah, that's basically it for everything I want to cover that's actually a little core mechanic related. Alright, now though, I'll be illustrating all the things that are going on. And, uh, yep, just walk you guys through this once at a time. Oh, yeah. And, uh, Tondaka Market, basically unchanged. It's actually completely unchanged. I gotta say that for, for uh, straight up. Uh, just like before, if you have a save file for Ultimate Ninja 2, uh, you immediately start the game off with 50,000 Rio, and, um, it starts you off with, like, a shitload of Ninja cards. Like, I'm not kidding. I assure you, I have not spent a... Ever since I started a save file, uh, like, a week ago, I have not spent a dime on Ninja cards. Let me show you how many I have. This is ridiculous. It just starts me of all of this. <gasps> oh my god, you go! <laughs> God damn it, she needs more exposure. Anyway. Wait, wait, wait. Actually, I don't look at these very much. I think it got me a lot more, actually. Booyah. Anyway. So, back to the game at hand. Alright, so. Uh, I was explaining earlier, I had no idea really how to do this game. That's because this game doesn't have one story mode. It kind of technically has two. Um... First of all, there's Hero's History, which is basically just a complete retelling of not just the Sasuke Retrieval arc, but it actually goes as far back as a ho as a Zabuza and Haku fight. I'm not even joking, it actually goes back that far. And it recaps that, it recaps the tuning exams, it recaps the, hit, the Tsunai Search arc, and, it, and it does like eight fights or so in the Sasuke arc. I'm not sure why I decided to recap all the way back there, but it's not as bad as it sounds. The first three arcs only have like four fights a pop, so it's not that bad. And uh, there's also a new mode called, um, what is it? Ultimate Contest over here, which is. <gasps> mm. You might remember the open world elements from Ultimate Ninja 2, which unfortunately I never really got to explore too much, but here they kind of blow it up out of way out of proportion and just stick as much in there as they possibly can. Give it its own quote unquote story mode. It's more just just filler, you know. I heard it. You know how Naruto games operate by now. It's more or less just all filler, and they just go to town with it. So yeah, that ultimate contest is going to take a while. It's going to take a lot of editing. It's also going to take a lot of time to do. Also, so to start this off, I'm just going to do Heroes History. Uh, nothing too fancy, and uh, just get the show going as it is.